Repro Surface Coat and laminating resins are a popular choice among our customers who are making a medium sized tool and don't need the strength of an epoxy. Let me stop here for a second and explain why we are laminating instead of casting. The first question we always ask when someone says they want to make a mold is what is the size of the model? For small models, we recommend mass casting because it is easier and faster. For large models, we recommend laminating in order to lower the overall weight and save on material cost. And for medium sized models, there are some hybrid options to explore as well. Now let's get back to our demonstration. To demonstrate working with a repro surface coat and laminating resin system, we will create a tool based on this part. The frame is made of pine wood and the entire part has been treated with one coat of Freeman wax release and one coat of PVA mold release. For proper application procedure, please refer to our other video on this subject. Our repro surface coat and laminating resin system has several advantages over using an epoxy, such as the easy one to one mix ratio, the lower cost, and the shorter gel times, allowing an entire tool to be created in 75 minutes, as opposed to overnight. Also, by using fiberglass strand instead of cloth, it is easier to fit the tool around intricate parts. The Repro Surface Coat starts out thinner than an epoxy, so we want to start out by covering the areas of our part with the highest detail and the corners. If the viscosity is too thin, such as for applying material on vertical walls, we would wait a bit and it will thicken up. We will be applying two layers of surface coat, so we're not as worried about getting everything the first time around. And we're not worried about excessive buildup as in an epoxy because Repro doesn't produce a lot of heat. After three minutes, notice how the liquid is already thickening up, making it easier to apply to vertical surfaces. The gel time is determined by what point the material is so thick that it will no longer self-level. The almost tack-free state will occur in about 15 to 20 minutes and then we are ready for the second coat. For more information on identifying the almost tack-free state, please refer to our epoxy surface coat and laminating resin video. Again, we started on the areas requiring the highest detail. We can also apply this layer more liberally. With our surface coat again at an almost tack free state, we're mixing up a small amount of our laminating resin. Then we apply one coat directly on top of the surface coat to act as an adhesion layer. Next, we're ready to mix the laminating resin with the fiberglass strand. First, we mix the two sides of the laminating resin like any other one-to-one -one ratio liquid tooling material. Then, we pour the mixture into a larger cup and begin adding the chopped fiber. We can make this as wet or dry as we like. The drier you make it, the lower the resin content, which will lessen both the heat and the shrinkage. However, we'll want to make sure there's enough resin so it is still sticky. Here we have our finished dough-like material. The top of our tool is still wet from our adhesion layer as we begin to apply it everywhere. We work it into smaller areas with a paint paddle. There will be more material used here than with an epoxy layup, so we can expect a little more shrink, but it is still more controllable and uses a lot less material than a mass cast which is why mast cast materials are usually used only for smaller parts. As we progress, it may be difficult to see exactly how thick our tool is. We want 3 16 to about a quarter of an inch thick. Notice how much easier it is to apply this thick of material than it is if we were using numerous layers of fiberglass cloth. This is one of the primary advantages of repro surface coat and laminating resin. As our mixture starts to dry, it is even easier to work with. We can even form it with our hand. Here we are unscrewing the back side of our mold. Then, after turning the mold back over, we gently tap four wedges to begin separating our tool. It is important to lift the tool evenly. 
If we lift from an angle, we can create a negative draft, which we don't want. Once the tool is removed, we have to remove the PVA mold release by dampening a cloth and wiping off the entire surface of our tool. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are released. This particular video is part of a much larger set of videos, originally released as a DVD, but now available in our extensive online video library, which you can view for free at freemanvideos.com.